What's up guys? My name is Scott and welcome to Teaching Tuesdays. Teaching Tuesdays are five minute strength and movement tutorials about various training principles to help you achieve your physical goals. Today we're going to talk about progressive overload. We're going to talk about what it is, why you need it and how to implement it in your workout routine. Okay, let's get ready and let's talk about progressive overload. So progressive overload literally means increasing the stress on the muscles over time. It's like giving your muscles a challenge that they need to adapt to, to become stronger, bigger, and more efficient. Compare it to learning. If you always study the same material, you won't get smarter and you won't improve. Same goes for the muscles. If you always lift the same weights, you won't get stronger or won't get bigger. Next up, why is progressive overload necessary? So our body always wants to become efficient, as efficient as possible. So when we're doing an exercise, in the beginning we will struggle, but after a while it will go easy and we'll be able to do a lot of reps. For example, push-ups, in the beginning you can only do one or two, and then after training it for like a month or three or four years, you'll be able to do 20, 50 or even 100 in a row. So with progressive overload, we can trick the body to get out of the comfort zone and to constantly keep adapting to new challenges. This will help you get stronger, get more efficient, and get bigger muscles. Okay, now how to implement progressive overload in your workout routine. There are several ways to implement progressive overload. You can gradually lift heavier, you can increase reps, increase sets, or even uh, decrease the rest time between sets to be able to make it harder and more of a challenge for your body. But how you use progressive overload really depends on what type of goal you have. So for example, you want to build a bigger chest. It's important then you not decrease the rest time too much because hypertrophy training, that's the, the training where the chest grows, um, really goes good and uh, benefits from having rest between 60 and 90 seconds. So in that case, if you're building chest with push-ups, for example, you might want to make it a bit harder by putting your legs higher or even getting some weight on your back. So before applying progressive overload, make sure you know what you want to train and why. So here is a progressive overload of a push-up. Um, so for example, if you want to train chest and get bigger, push-ups are a very good exercise that you can just do at, uh, at the convenience of your own home or even at the gym. So when you start with a push-up, you can start with the incline, as you can see here, with the incline position, because you're putting your hands a bit higher, it's going to be a bit of little bit less weight on the hands and the arms it's going to be a bit easier to be able to do the push-up then next up you're going to do the flat push-up with the flat push-up it's going to be a bit harder again then after that you will introduce the decline push-up by placing your feet higher there will be more weight on the hands or make it harder again for the chest the arms and the hands so this is a small a way that you can use progressive overload to be able to keep on making gains within your workout routine Okay guys, thank you for watching. That was it for progressive overload. Remember, progressive overload is the gradually increasing of stress on the muscles over time. Keep challenging them to get stronger, bigger, and more efficient. Um, don't forget to sus subscribe and like the video. If you have any ideas or comments or, or questions, you can drop them below. And for the rest, I hope you have a great day. Happy practice and see you next week in Teaching Tuesdays. Ciao.